you know, getting shot in the back of the neck. And uh, I have a real prediction after that question. All right. Um, you answer that question, then I have a little story about the same, uh, about that type of incident. But go ahead. Right. Well, I think at the end of the day, you need to use common sense. I understand as someone that practices constitutional law that there is a series of rights that the citizens have, that they don't have to show a police officer an ID, they don't have to stand and talk to a police officer, so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, if you want to get home, I would talk to the police officer. I mean, there's one thing about proving some sort of constitutional principle in theory or in law school when you're debating it. But when you're on the street, I would just be respectful to the police officer, show him the ID, and treat him professionally. I think a lot of these issues arise and when people don't do that and the whole situation escalates and it gets to the point in which the police officer then overreacts. Yeah, do you want to turn it into a, a three-year chapter of your life right. o- over an ID? And and I'm, hey, I re- totally respect people who stand up for their rights. I do it. Um, there was one incident, though. I was in Detroit, Michigan with uh, Aaron Dykes, and we were shooting uh, B-roll, uh, a time-lapse of the city at night of Detroit. And we were at a park across, across a river, actually on a little island. And uh, we were shooting this footage. Cops roll up. They get out. They start talking to us. One's a good cop. One's a bad cop. And they want to see ID. And, uh, and Aaron's like, I don't have to show you my ID. And, and they're like, yes, you're, you're actually, you don't. You're right. And uh, I actually, I just pulled out my ID. I said, I know I don't have to show it to you either, but I'm going to give you this so you will f- figure out that we're no, we're no problem here. We're, all we're doing is shooting video, and then you're going to leave us alone. And they said, yeah. They looked at my ID, handed it back to me. They got in their car and left. Right. So we could have turned that into a big incident, but... We didn't, and we went on with our lives, and they went on with their lives. So there's something to be said with you know using a little bit of common sense in these situations. So, uh, Hal, go ahead with your prediction. Uh, thank you for that answer. Pretty much uh, got what I was looking for there. Um, yeah, what what I was uh, predicting, though, is something that I've been kind of picking up on in a lot of subliminals uh, about, like, an assassination. And I know you guys had a guest on. I can't remember who it was, predicted that, whenever the final false flag came in, it was actually going to be in FEMA Region 3, where I'm calling from. And then it's just all this weird timing in September and with Obama going to Alaska to shoot this weird episode with Bear Grylls in Alaska and changing the Mount McKinley. I researched who uh, President McKinley was, and there were some striking uh, coincidences between similarities between McKinley and Obama. And McKinley was assassinated in his second term of presidency by a... uh, Don't say it was a guy named Denali. uh, If you say that, I'm going to freak out. (laughs) Yep. And um, with the Pope coming in to Philadelphia, which is in FEMA Region 3... That was my question, yes. I just -hmm. just thought that basically this is how I predicted a long time how how it would go down was that it would be an assassination on somebody like a sniper assassination and um that person would be wounded everybody would think he was dead but really he would be in critical condition for a while and uh i'm not sure what would happen after that and that's my prediction and thanks a lot you guys love you guys Bye. all right we'll mark it as a prediction and if it comes to pass you will be known as a prophet how in fema region three Let's see who's next here scott in nebraska what is your question for our guest adam lowey I've got a statement, and then I got two questions. Right, They've been ahead. using these false flags and this MK Ultra. They've been winding them up, and basically uh, starting a war. You know, and they're starting a war now between the police department, military, and, and the citizens. With the ultimate goal: of the confiscations of the gun uh, to confirm to to uh, conform to the new world order. And, and you know, Obama's saying the same thing: that we got to be like the rest of the world; that nobody can have guns and all that. And ultimately, that's going to end up with the mark of the beast where you have to have a mark to, to buy or sell. Don't we need an army of lawyers to stop this war? Because when we're talking military and police, uh, we're getting dangerously close here. And the other part of this is, do you have someone uh, that you can recommend as an MK lawyer, MK Ultra lawyer? Do you know what MK Ultra is? I don't. Well, well <laughs> I'm going to tell you after the break because it's going to take a little bit longer than the, the 10, 15 seconds we have here. Scott, we're going to we're going to answer that question when we come back and uh, take a couple more calls. And then that'll be end of the uh, show. And then we're going to do an hour of overdrive. I'm going to have Jakari Jackson and Liam McAdoo in here. We're going to cover some stories, show you that shocking video that really made, sickened me to my stomach um, yesterday when I put it out on the Alex Jones channel. 
final segment of the third hour of the Alex Jones Show. I'm your host, Rob Dew. Once again, you can watch this on TV at Infowars.com forward slash show. And the reason I keep pushing that is because I was one of the people that helped put this uh, studio together in terms of uh, wrangling um, construction people and designers and lighting it's, people. It's and, a gorgeous studio. Let me tell it's you, I'm, gorgeous. I'm in love with this studio. I really do like it. Um, we've had, uh, I love the shiny floor. It is a pain to clean every once in a while, but... We do it, and uh, it looks great, and and to me, it helps uh, enhance the image of what we're you know putting out. It gives our our information more credibility. Absolutely, so, absolutely. And having lawyers on sometimes helps. <laughs> I have a love hate relationship with lawyers, although I do love my old lawyer, uh, Stuart Rhodes, who helped me out, and uh, I got arrested for in uh, 2009 at the G20 in Pittsburgh. So, Scott, you were asking about MK Ultra, and that was the. Uh, uh, that was the mind control program run by the CIA where they would use LSD to dose people up to make them more suggestible and then get them to control their actions. There's uh, people, uh, Ted Kaczynski was in the MK Ultra program. He even wrote that in his manifesto. Some people think the shooter uh, in Colorado, the Batman shooter, was also involved in this because he was in some weird mind control stuff too in his college. But so Scott was asking uh, if you could recommend a lawyer uh, for these types of cases. Scott, I cannot recommend a lawyer for those types of cases, but I'm certain lawyers are out there that do them. I would just Google uh, an MK Ultra lawyer, uh, but I do not focus on that type. The big thing is being able to show damage, right? At right. the end of the day, you have to be able to show you've been damaged some way and have some sort of proof of that. Right. And, um, you know, and, so, and, and that it, is hard. Right. And, I, and I'll also cases. say this, I can't overstate this point. The hardest thing to do in the legal system, in my opinion, is suing the government. Yeah. When you look at the hurdles that you have to deal with. Or defend yourself from the government. Right. That's, I if mean, the government's you, coming after you, it's Absolutely. You're dealing with an entity with unlimited money, mm -hmm. with unlimited resources. And, and this is what the public often doesn't realize, the way they write the laws completely favor the government. Yeah. And because the government writes the laws. So the government is not going to make it easy for you to sue the government. Right. And that is a fundamental fact that... I often have to explain to people and explain to my clients that it's difficult, it's challenging. And so a case like that would be extra challenging because you'd be up against the federal government, right. dealing with classified information. And, and they could hide behind that very easily. Very easily. Yeah. And they always do it. Let's go to Chris in Florida. Chris, go ahead. Well, Counselor, are you, uh, do you handle, uh, my first question, do you handle um, civil rights cases? Yes. Great. And um, maybe I missed this, but uh, did you mention, uh, is it uh, difficult? The, the qu uh, first question I have is, is it difficult for an uh, attorney to be a civil rights uh, attorney uh, because they're afraid of going in front of the, the judges and uh, losing um, their, you know, their, uh, they're basically being muted by, uh, by the, the same judge in the same jurisdiction? Uh, there are certain jurisdictions where I think that's true. I think here in Austin, Texas, that's not true. Uh, I've never experienced that. I think that most judges realize that uh, we have civil rights for a reason and they properly adjudicate the cases. And truthfully, the judges don't need to make it extra hard than it already is. It's already difficult because of the way the laws are written. And so I haven't personally experienced that. I have had colleagues that I have talked to that have experienced that though in other cities. And if you want to get in contact with Adam, you can reach him through his website at loweyfirm.com, L-O-E-W-Y-F-I-R-M.com. There it is right there. Got some nice looking office ladies with you. I do. I have a great team yeah. and uh, it's a new design by our great marketing director, Kate Terry. And I think it makes me look good. All right. Hey, you want to do five minutes of overdrive? We'll take the rest of these calls. Sure. Let's do it. We're going to do five minutes of overdrive with Adam Lowy, attorney for uh, the Larry Jackson family. And uh, he's going to take some of your calls. We're going to finish that up. And then we're going to have uh, Jakari Jackson and Leanne McAdoo here. I'm Rob Dew. This is The Alex Jones Show. You're tuned in. I hope you like it. Infowars.com forward slash show. Totalitarianism comes in many different flavors throughout history. It can come from the right wing, the left wing. It can come from religious cults. It can come from a foreign invading army. And in the modern 21st century, it's basically coming from political correctness, masquerading as the Renaissance, masquerading as liberalism. It seeks to shut down free speech. And the controlled globalist left has willing accomplices in the Republican Party 
and other conservative and libertarian organizations and groups throughout the world. The robber barons that control this planet are not free market. They are monopoly men who seek to have systems free of competition, controlled by offshore combines above the law. The main mission of Infowars.com and my 20 years on air is to shatter the left-right paradigm and to get the public to become aware of what's really governing and controlling society on a mass scale. Bottom line, we have reached that legendary, colossal moment in history where the next thousand years of human development, our very destiny is being decided. That's why we're launching Operation Money Bomb 2015. The first money bomb I've done in three years because we only do these if they're critical to be able to build up our infrastructure. And with the money we raise from this, we will be able to stay on the satellites and get on UHF, VHF, and cable stations across North America, reaching tens of millions of more people right at the time they're receptive and looking for answers. Starting September 16th, through the 17th, we're going to broadcast live from 11 a.m. on the 16th through 2 p.m. on the 17th for 27 hours with an amazing lineup of guests, investigative journalists, documentary films, and more. We are seeking to raise a million dollars so that we can reach 400 million extra people potentially in the next year. Because if you do the math, and if you look at the numbers that we're already getting from affiliates and from the internet and from YouTube and from Facebook and all the platforms, we are reaching 20 million people a week. If you put all that together over a year, that's upwards of 200 million different individuals around the world is how the algorithm metrics come out. So I simply want to double that in the next 12 months after launching this money bomb. Just the satellites, the closed captioning under federal law and other regulations will cost us right at $39,000 a month, which if you add it together is over $400,000 a year alone. When you talk about cameras, crew, studio, million dollars is only a portion of what we need to do this. But it's an important part to ensure with the collapsing economy and the hard times we're going into that we have the funds it takes to keep this beacon of truth exposing globalism and dehumanization operating so join us this september 16th and 17th for what i believe will be the final money bomb that infowars ever runs as we prepare to launch to the next and final level of global awakening because as mahatma gandhi famously said First, they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they attack you, then you win. We are in that process of being massively attacked. And in the face, we're charging up, getting ready, and going in. Go to Infowars.com forward slash money bomb for all the information. And in closing, I want to say this to all of you patriots out there across the globe that have spread the word about our operation and that have supported us. History is happening right now. The destiny of humanity is being decided right now. And InfoWars, which you the viewers and listeners and activists stand at the heart of, is the engine that has made all this possible. You're not standing behind the InfoWar. You are standing at the center of it. You are right beside us in this fight. And I guarantee you, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and Sam Adams would be incredibly proud of what you've done in defense of human freedom, in defense of true liberty. So from myself, Alex Jones, and the entire InfoWars crew, we salute you. Join us this September 16th and 17th for the 27-hour Money Bomb in defense of human liberty. My guest, attorney Adam Lowy, was just asking me, um, do you have Secret Service come here? And, and they've been here, I think, at least once, maybe twice. Uh, Texas Rangers have been here, FBI, usually because of some, you know, jerk puts a weird comment about killing police on our uh, message board. And, you know, they want the information on it. A couple times they've come here. I think it was the Texas Rangers and David Knight takes on his camera. <laughs> <laughs>
And um, he starts filming the guys and he goes, please.